。站在难民的视角体验生活，亦或身临其境直面埃博拉，可能吗？一种新技术告诉你，有可能，那就是虚拟现实。我们一起来看下面的故事。对电视观众而言，人道主义危机再熟悉不过了。造成难民大迁徙的内战、全球性的疾病大流行，还有各种自然灾害，比如地震和海啸。我们大多数人习惯用这种方式收看揪心的事件报道，我们坐在屏幕前被动的收看。然而，假如你能走进屏幕，切身感受到当事人的所见所闻呢 ？People come out of it feeling enlightened and often moved and often ready to take action. A lot of people automatically say, well, "What can I do? How can I get involved?" 加博阿罗拉是联合国下辖团队的创意总监，他利用尖端科技争取人们的关注和共情，并且筹款。以响应人道主义危机事件和支持全球一系列新的可持续发展目标。Virtual reality is the ability to really take part in a story that usually you're only a passive spectator on, and it's giving you the possibility to walk in another person's shoes, understand where they live, see what their world is like. And you actually get the sensation of feeling like you're being there. 用二 D 的媒介展现虚拟现实，就像现在屏幕里展示的那样，是不可能真实呈现通过虚拟现实 VR 眼镜所看到的景象的。通过多机位的拍摄，能够记录各个方向的画面，之后利用软件将各画面缝起来，由此 VR 技术就能让人们体验到无死角的影像。无论从上方、下方还是后方。It's exciting for the UN, you know, to be involved in some of those early experiments of how we're trying to tell stories, make these films, and, and work with some of the most cutting-edge people in the industry on it. So the UN reached out to us and connected, and we realized that there was a great opportunity here to tell some very important stories and to tell them in a way that we thought、uh, would be totally new and, and highly impactful. 亚伦·科布林是硅谷的一名技术专家，同时也是美国飞鸭设备制造和分销公司维氏工作室的创始人。Usually consists、uh, in the portable form of a mobile phone. That connects directly into a viewer. So whether that's a higher-end version like the Gear VR by Samsung, or a Google Cardboard unit, you have basically the same idea. Lenses, which are having using sensors to orient you and convince yourself that you're somewhere where you're not. This is the most basic VR viewer. It's a Google Cardboard. So it comes like this, and then you quickly assemble it like so. Drop your phone in here, like that, so you can. Look around and actually be immersed. The way that I define virtual reality at this point in time is basically the hacking of your senses to convince you that you're somewhere other than where you are. Often, I think of it as a sense of vulnerability. So one of the things we've realized in, in some of our stories is you have a heightened sense of empathy and a heightened sense of connection as a result of that vulnerability. 更强烈的连同感，更强烈的同理心，正是加博阿罗拉在瑞士达沃斯世界经济论坛上力图创造的。不仅是为了呼吁领导人采取行动，更是为了影响捐赠者加大捐赠力度，支持应对灾难的努力。I started experimenting with using innovative ways of advocacy, and I started talking to a lot of different. Partners and people, what could we do that would be incredible? And someone said, you know, I just came from a meeting at Samsung, and you know, with some of these other virtual reality headsets, wouldn't it be amazing if you got all of those elite people who could actually go to a refugee camp, or they could go to an Ebola clinic? I just really felt it would get our issues highlighted. One of the things we were most excited about was the potential to get these headsets. Onto heads that that really make the decisions and and have impact in the world. 
we were able to put it on the heads of these change makers and for a brief moment put them you know uh, on the ground in the refugee camp and it, it's I think a really powerful thing you could see the way that it was impacting them. 除了在陶沃斯放映相关影片，全世界各个高级别政治论坛上也安装了 VR 设备。其中一位使用 VR 终端的领导人，就是美国驻联合国大使萨曼莎·鲍尔。他所收看的 VR 影片是《希德拉的云》。Clouds of Resedra is a short film in virtual reality about a girl named Sidra who lives in Zatari camp, which is a Syrian refugee camp in Jordan. And it is a story about a young girl who has been there for a year and a half and is giving you a tour of the camp, of what it's like, what her life is like. When the film debuted in Davos, it was a sensation to everyone we showed it to. They came out of it、uh, very deeply moved.、Um, I'd say half the people who watch Clouds of Procedure cry. We're seeing generally a much higher level of engagement. I mean, one because they're actively engaged in looking around, but also I think a higher level of emotional connection and empathy. The film was then integrated with the Secretary General in the Kuwait. Pledging conference for Syria, he made everyone at the reception at the pledging conference watch it, and it really made a big difference on getting people to pledge more and to care more and to be more involved. And then we cut a version for UNICEF for its face-to-face -face fundraisers. The way they do that is usually someone with a clipboard on the street in Europe or in different countries. So they thought. Well, what if we got people to experience virtual reality on the street? I was a little depressed about the situation for the people there. Quite sad. They do have a good environment to stay. We try our best to help them. 从联合国儿童基金会的初期报告来看，如果使用虚拟现实，炫目的有效性会翻倍。The fact that virtual reality is so real means that we have to think a lot more about the ethical aspects of what we do. Tom Kenter is the editor of Wired, and he is also the author of the book "Virtual Reality: The Ethics of Virtual Reality." There is a psychological impact that VR has that is greater than the impact of photos or video. It hits you at a more elemental level. When somebody is watching a video or someone is looking at a photo, they know. That they are external to the scene and they're looking in at something. VR operates at a different level. It's putting you in the scene and working on your brain in ways that I don't think is really completely understood. We got the blessing to do one on Ebola. Waves of Grace is an Ebola survivor who is basically you get access to her prayer and you feel like. You have this intimate moment with her as she's praying to God. 慈悲的浪在联合国秘书长主持的埃博拉恢复国际会议上展映，获得了五十二亿美元的认捐额。What people really feel moved by is they've never been in a, a, a poor slum in a hut. They've never been at an Ebola burying site. So many people said that they've seen that picture in the news, but actually, being there while a body is being buried is is something else. It makes you think about this crisis and other crises in a different way. The most important thing is transparency. If the VR producer is trying to advance a political cause or a social cause, that needs to be made clear. I think one just has to be really open and clear about one's methods. We're going to constantly be evolving and thinking about these ethics even more as we go forward. We privilege the human story. You know, it isn't so much the UN did this and. This is what's happening, and this is what you should do. 
It really is a quiet sort of, let's put yourself in the shoes of another. But it definitely is something that we are just at the beginning of. Being at the forefront of it, especially for the United Nations, gives us a lot of advantages to tell our stories and make a difference with a whole new generation of viewers, and especially a lot of young people. Because if we didn't do what we do with virtual reality, it would fill up with games and escapism. When a 15-year-old would unwrap his Christmas present a year from now or two years from now, he wouldn't have Clouds of Residra and this UN series there for him.